In my last video, I discussed equivalent variation and compensating variation, and I illustrated what they were here on the graph. I reproduced the graph and put both of them on the same graph. As you may recall, compensating variation, we look at uh, increase in the price, and then we ask how much do we need to compensate. That's in green, and it's essentially the Hicks decomposition. Uh, in equivalent variation, we threaten an increase in the price, and then we ask, well, how much do we have to, uh, how much would this individual be willing to pay to avoid that increase in the price? And that gets us an intermediate point, like E, on the final indifference curve. I also made some reference to how this relates to the expenditure function. Now, if you've studied the expenditure function, you remember that it is, uh, we ask ourselves, what, how much does it cost, at a minimum, to reach a target level of utility. So compensating variation, if we think about it in terms of the expenditure function, would just be the difference in how much bundle A costs compared to bundle C, which is useful because they're on the same indifference curve. So we can write the expenditure function representation here. Now the only arguments that differ are the price of X. The price of all other goods remains constant throughout this, so we can think about it as the expenditure function. Here, bundle A is the original prices minus the expenditure function at the final prices and the original utility. That would be a compensating variation. We could also do this with the equivalent variation. Remember, bundle E has the original prices. So this is the expenditure function at the original prices and final utility. We've got the expenditure function. Again, it's at final utility. But it's also at bundle B, which is the new prices. If we take the derivative of the expenditure function with respect to the price, that turns out to be the Hicksian demand curve. We have this in calculus, there's this calculus result that relates the, the derivative to the integral. So if we integrate both sides of this, we get the expenditure function. Just taking the integral of the derivative, that gets us the expenditure function. Turns out that when we have differences like this, this is just a definite integral. For example, if we want to compute the compensating variation, well, what we can do is we can just compute this integral. It's going to be the integral from the final price to the original price of our Hicksian demand curve. And we'll call this a dummy variable t and our original utility. So that will be our compensating variation. So now we have a sort of an integral way of thinking about this. How does this look on a graph? We can think about our Hicksian demand curve as a function of price and utility. Let's just do compensating variation um, for the sake of the simplicity on this graph. Our original price and our final price. And we can ask ourselves, when we integrate from the final price to the original price, what that area looks like. Now this should start looking very similar to something that you may have seen in your introductory economics classes. This might remind you very much like an area under a demand curve, especially if we thought about this whole area and then we thought, well, what's the difference between, say, this amount of welfare and that amount of welfare. It's just going to be that little trapezoid there. And we get these welfare triangles. It turns out that this is what compensating variation looks like. It looks like a change in the area under our Hicksian demand curve. And that's actually a really useful uh, representation. 
because this is related to something that we call consumer surplus. Now the difference between changes in compensating variation or equivalent variation to, things, to a change in consumer surplus has to do with which demand curve we integrate under. Now we're integrating under the Hicksian demand curve. Consumer surplus, change in consumer surplus, is the corresponding change in the welfare that we would see under a Marshallian demand curve. And so now you kind of have a relationship between Hicksian demand curves, Marshallian demand curves, compensating variation, equivalent variation, those are both with your Hicksian demand curve, there are areas underneath a Hicksian demand curve, and consumer surplus is an area underneath a Marshallian demand curve. It would be useful to go ahead and relate those, and we do have a relationship that relationship is the Slutsky equation, and you can use that Slutsky equation to show that either consumer surplus is less than compensating variation and greater than equivalent variation, or the opposite, or they're all equal. And it turns out that the income effect is the only difference. But that really shouldn't be surprising because the income effect is the difference between the Hicksian and the Marshallian demand curves. And this kind of gives us a sense for how come economists talk about consumer surplus and why consumer surplus makes sense in a way to measure economic welfare.